The onstage energy at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library last night was chaotic, sloppy, and largely substance-free. Seven candidates desperately fought for fresh relevance. None of them came away with it. Rather than pitching themselves as the candidate who can beat former President Donald Trump, these Republicans seem to be operating most of the time in an alternate universe, one in which Trump was absent not just from the stage, but from the race. But one decent moment that stood out to us was Governor Ron DeSantis when he called out the Washington Bureau to put America first. Watch him explain. They've sent money to pay uh, bureaucrats pensions and salaries and funding small businesses halfway around the world. Meanwhile, our own country is being invaded. Uh, we don't even have control of our own territory. We have got to defend the American people before we even worry about all these other things. And I watch these guys in Washington, D.C., and they don't care about the American people. Well, this sounds a lot like former President Donald Trump, but a decent moment nonetheless. And even CNN had to admit the former president had a good night without even being at the debate. And I want to look at that camera right now and tell you, Donald, I know you're watching. You can't help yourself. I know you're watching, okay? And you're not here tonight. Not because of polls and not because of your indictments. You're not here tonight because you're afraid of being on the stage and defending your record. You're ducking these things. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. Well, here now to assess last night's debate performance is a senior advisor to Donald Trump and the host of the Right View podcast, Laura Trump. Laura, thank you for joining us, Chris Christie. Bless Pract his heart, Eric. Pra practice you know, that line a few times. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, th this is what he came out with. I wonder, I, to your point, how many times had Chris Christie, poor thing, practiced that line? He probably had very high paid political consultants who were like, this will be it. This is the one where you can get the edge on Donald Trump and really stick it to him. Uh, just when you thought he couldn't go any lower, he mopped the floor with himself. So bless his heart, as we say in the South. Yeah, so he and Trump, we, we held, uh, we took Donald Trump's speech in, in Detroit or just north of Detroit last night. Fantastic. Um, but he continues to win these debates without showing up, I guess. Yeah, at, at one point. At what point did these guys just realize, and gals with Nikki Haley, realize that they're not going to be the nominee? Might as well just coalesce around the leader and show the Democrats that we're united. Well, I mean, I think it's so silly that they're continuing with these debates as though we don't know who the Republican nominee is. I mean, Donald Trump is nearly 50 points above even the top rate rated person from last night's debate stage. And I mean, there, there's really no place in which anyone is going to catch him. He keeps going up and up and up. And I think people understand that that is the nominee. So it seems rather silly, honestly, to even go forward with these debates. I think at this point, a lot of these people are vying for a VP spot, maybe, or somewhere in a cabinet position should Donald Trump become the 47th president and they think they can maybe get in there that way. But, you know, I, I've always said I don't know why these PACs are spending millions of dollars fighting against Donald Trump. I don't know why the RNC is wasting time on anyone else. This is a time, I think, to your point, to, to rally around the person who we know is the nominee for the Republican Party. Let's put all of our chips in on Donald Trump. Let's rally behind him. Let's beat the Democrats and let's make sure we win in 2024, because honestly, there really is no other option if we want to save this country. And final thought uh, last night, Donald Trump said he kind of chuckled that the seven candidates were they're on the debate stage and he asked the crowd each other like, ah, but none of them look like VP candidates to me for me I've known the guy a long time and that's him pretty much saying I'm not going to pick any one of those so if you want to want to play the guessing game scratch those off your card yeah I mean he likes to keep us all guessing that's the thing about my father-in-law I don't think anyone uh, does it better honestly than he does and so look I don't know who his top picks are I think he is probably the only person at this point who could tell us that he will keep us guessing but I think you're right he doesn't really he doesn't keep anything on the inside he always puts it out there for us so look if he said it last night maybe that means all those people might want to head back home I don't know it doesn't yeah, look too good we're gonna leave it there I wanted to talk to you about the don't back down uh, Tom Petty cover that you did I liked it I wanted to play it they're like she might get mad no I would like <laughs> to do it next time we come on next uh, time Eric. Next, I want to hear the, I want to hear more of it but it's, it's brilliant <laughs> what you did like Tom Petty's Thank estate you. says no you can't use it so you cover it with your own and then you can use it brilliant anyway Anyway, Laura, Thank really you. good to have you on. Thank you.
You got it.